but uh, that's a big advantage because you can see uh, both sides and from a different perspective. Uh, please welcome Suchi. She's a student in Helmstad uh, University. Uh, you may introduce yourself. Yep. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I, my name is Suchi. Before I introduce myself, more details. Um, the title of my presentation is the China Conundrum from an international student perspective. Before, um, I would not take credit for this title because I basically read two very interesting articles. Um, the title is the China Conundrum. The first one is from the perspective of American professor and the second one is from the student, Chinese student perspective. Um, the first one is basically uh, explaining about uh, the trend of how a lot of Chinese students are now going to U.S. and they learn and they study in a lot of degrees in U.S. and basically the U.S. education system, they are still feeling confused on how to take care of these Chinese students because the behavior is totally different and um, when it comes to language it's also a big barrier for them. So the first article is basically trying to uh, show what this is so confusing even from U.S. perspective to learn about China or Chinese student itself. And the second one is how the student is trying to answer the questions from the uh, American perspective that uh, actually Chinese students are also feeling confused about the American culture and they are also struggling to learn about the culture itself in U.S. So yeah, so conundrum is basically uh, uh, something that is confusing and difficult to questions. And this is uh, similar with what I'm going to say or um, share today to you about my program in China for two months, exchange from Homestead University. And yeah, uh, first I'll introduce myself. My name is Suchi Arihanti. I came from Indonesia. It's um, a country in Southeast Asia, if you ever heard about Bali. So yeah, that's the most um, famous island, I guess, and even some people think Indonesia is in Bali. But the fact is that Bali is in Indonesia, so... <laughs> yeah, I spent most of my life in Indonesia. Uh, I, I graduated in Bogor Agricultural University. Thank you. And I, I have experienced three and a half years experience in one of the financial institutions in Indonesia before I finally decided to start my master's degree in Helmstad University, Sweden. So I flew all the way from Indonesia to Sweden, Helmstad, and um, have uh, to try to learn more about business program in Hamstad University and after one and a half years I finally decided to take this uh, chance to go to China with Professor Mike Danilovich. We had this two months exchange um, and the theme is uh, about business and how to, do, how to do business in China. That's the big picture of it and then I flew all the way from Sweden to go to China and spend two months there. Uh, the interesting part is that um, yeah. This is basically the picture of all of the group of students I here to represent all of my friends who cannot join, unfortunately. Uh, we came from different countries. Um, three people are from German, one from Colombia, one from Belgium, one from Indonesia, me, and also, of course, one from Sweden. Um, we had these three, six weeks of lectures about a lot of themes about uh, history of China, political in China, um, religion, culture, and also we learned some basic Mandarin, and we had several visits to also to several uh, entrepreneurs, both Western entrepreneurs, Swedish entrepreneurs, and also some Chinese as well. Um, yeah, and we learned a lot about also about Belt and Road Initiative over there. Um, I think that was also my first exposure about that, because before I didn't know anything about that, and I realized China is actually having a very, very great uh, big idea to try to uh, build and develop all the countries. And also because I come from developing countries. And I think if you, if you see uh, this picture, I am the only Asian who actually participated in the program. Because the rest are European and also one American. And um, some of my friends also asked me this question about why uh, you, you came here to Sweden all the way from Indonesia, from Asia to Sweden is basically to learn about Western culture and learn more from developing countries to developed countries. Why, why you finally decided to go to China? Which actually the culture is a lot similar to what I have in Indonesia because Indonesia and China has a lot of uh, cooperation as well, similarities in culture. 
and I think that's the thing that I learned the most because I I have two different perspectives from as being an Asian and also second now I know actually what is going on in Western culture. So that would be my topic. Um, yeah. First of all, um, okay, this is a video actually. Uh, yeah, if you can see that this is um, the usual um, morning situation. This is in one of the stations in Beijing. It, this is the rush hour situation in the morning. A lot of people, it's hard to get in, but it's even harder to get out. <laughs> this might be really confusing. Uh, the question is basically, what do you think about China or about Chinese or Asian? This goes for Western or European or Swedes here. That maybe you think that why, why Chinese are super how to say, impatient, why they really wanted to just run and then they don't care about people who want to go outside, out of the train. I'll try to answer that later. Uh, the second one is that you might plan to see a lot of Chinese or Asian, we like to be together, we eat together, we cook together, we study together. Everything is together, like you never see us alone. And that might be also confusing for you. Uh, the third one is, um, this is the, um, view in the class, the usual view in the class that mostly Chinese student or Asian student, we have this uniform in high school, elementary school, primary school, and we tend to just sit and still and listen to what our teacher has said. Because we are trained to listen to what teacher has said. And we think that it might be uh, not proper to, try to ask, to start questioning your teacher, because, yeah. I'll answer that as well later. And also the last one is that you might also see some family, they stay together forever. Maybe they have married, at, and, but they still live with their parents. Maybe they already have grandkids, and they, may, they are maybe having grandchildren, and grand, 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 grandchildren, but they are stick together. That also might be confusing for you. The other side, um, this is what Asians think about European. First, we also confuse why you guys really like to uh, stand in line, super patiently stand in line. We are also confused about that. Don't you think that you'll miss something if you really just patient stand and you just wait for something to happen? Don't, isn't it better for you to just run and try to just everything, the, the chance that you can get? That's what we think. Uh, the second one, we also feel confused why you guys like to travel alone, maybe sometimes study alone or eat alone. It's just... It's just confusing to be alone. <laughs> or isn't it better to share something that is ni nice with others as well? Uh, that one, the third one, is the situation at the class. I believe that in Western culture, it's um, really good for you to speak up about your mind in the class, and you are trained to really share what you're thinking. But it's confusing for us because we think that is rude. <laughs> like you cannot question your teacher or you cannot question your elders. And the last one is that we are feeling confused if we see that 19 years old kid um, walk up from home because how could you let your kid to go outside of the home without money, without having any job, without any certainty that happens outside? It feels like you don't love your kid anymore or what? So that's what we think. But um, yeah, I think after, yeah, I came from Indonesia again, then after I, came to Sweden, then I went to China. Then I kind of draw the line um, about all of that. First is actually there's the universal value that applies to everyone. That the first is everyone have this desire to have a good job and good life. From Asian perspective, for us it's better to be fast, it's better to chase everything that comes in front of you and just don't wait for any chance because you might just miss it. But for, for European, maybe it's better to be structured, to be weighed, because when you follow something structurally, then something good will come after, with a good quality. There's no right or wrong with that, but it's just different perspectives. The second one is that all humans like to enjoy a comfortable environment. For Asian, maybe it's better to be with um, a group of people, but for Western, it's better to be independent and do what you think is right for you and not following anyone else's perspective or thinking. 
The third one is people love to be appreciated. For us, how to appreciate people is to listen to what they are saying and not try to question them and try to take the good of it and just consume that for yourself and try to play the positive things. But for European, maybe how to appreciate people is try to also speak your mind, give feedback, and yeah, you give feedback basically because you care about them. Um, that's different way to show. Um, desire for belonging, it's um, related to, I think it's related to the local families as well. For us, it's better to take care of your kid until they really get ready to get out from home and they have a steady job, they have a good income, then they can start family and then they can go out from house. But for European or Western, it might be better to just let them go out and they will try and they will learn by themselves on how to really stand up for themselves. That's not wrong either. So both ways are good. Uh, and from here, I think um, the silver lining from all of them is I try to try to connect it to about business in China because I went to China. I actually tried to do business in China. And when you really wanted to do business in certain countries, you really need to know about their value and what is their culture. Uh, before I mention about actually Asian or Chinese uh, tend to be like something that is really fast and like something to be in, in a collective manner. One of the experiences that I have um, experienced when I was in China was um, there was this 11 11, 11 November. It's single day, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, a lot of online stores, they have this huge discount for us to shop and buy things. And I bought this one jeans. And I remember that I bought it right at 12 a.m. at night. And I received that 18 hours after in my room or in the possible place near my house basically, but it's 18 hours. I think that's super interesting because in Sweden I also bought some shoes and I might receive it four or five days. That's the, the, um, that's a different thing that I really uh, see interesting because uh, for China, the culture in China is that people like to be fast and it's really competitive and you need to really get a good, good service. Uh, they apply it as well in the, their marketing strategy and business strategy that they try to deliver as, as, as fast as possible so the customer feels satisfied and they will buy more and more and more. The second one is about the collectivism. This is one of the company that we visit. It's um, one of the property company in one area in Shanghai. So um, they actually made uh, one area we just call it one-stop shopping area. That they have this housing, apartment, school, offices, um, entertainment area, some parking lots and everything. It's basically uh, like uh, the one that Professor Mike has mentioned before, that they really wanted to make one thing that is cover everything. So um, that's also the, the value of collectivism because they like to do everything in one place and it's easier for them as well. But maybe uh, here, what I see is that um, maybe um, like here, uh, there is some business area district. But for housing area, it will be a bit, a bit far from the city center and those, those things. But China is going towards that. And also, I mean, if I if I try to see to my country, in Indonesia as well, we have um, uh, several Chinese entrepreneurs as well, and also some families are Chinese family who are living in Indonesia from very long time. This spirit is also already there, that we have several areas that cover everything, but apartment, school, and yeah, so many things. Um, yeah, that's basically my experience when I was in China. Um, one, one last point is that my conclusion is that um, it is essential for business people to understand cultural differences, because this is actually a way to develop economics, um, create jobs for people, and also mainly being beneficial for others. Because I think that is the purpose of life, to find your gift and share it with others. Thank you.